Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be Satan, God of this world. Now, if God created everything and he's in charge, how come Satan is called the God of this world? Why is that? I thought God was in charge of everything. Well, that's what we're going to find out. So turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul. There's a big push to hate on Paul and claim he's a false apostle. and But just know that those people are of the devil. And by the way, this is a new Bible study, August 2nd of 2021. Verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4.1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Bob's note here. You know, there was a question the apostles asked. When Jesus was speaking to the multitudes in parables, and they asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus basically replied, because unto you it is given to understand or to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them it is not given. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, but, you know, Everybody says, oh, the gospel's for everybody. Uh, that's not what Jesus said. That's not what Jesus said. So, if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, in whom... The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And he's talking about the flesh here. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side. Uh, do you think things have changed from the time of Paul till the time of today? No. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, 
but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death, so then death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore, speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up, shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. For through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. See, in the flesh, we have a light affliction. And compared to eternity, it's just a moment. Even if you live to be 98 years old, compared to eternity, it's just going to be for a moment. For a light affliction, it is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Uh, that's where they get the word. Uh, it's same root word as temporary. Temporal and temporary. You know, a period of time. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Forever, right? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to the Gospels. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Now, remember, uh, Jesus had just been baptized in water by John the Baptist. And then this is what happened afterward. Luke 4, verse 1. Now, remember... Uh, when Jesus was baptized in the water, the Spirit of God, as a dove, descended upon him. Luke 4.1 And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. Forty days. Jesus was tempted for forty days. How many years was Israel wandering, wandering in the wilderness when they came out of Egypt with Moses? Wasn't it 40 years? Yeah. 40 years, 40 days. Um, how many days did it rain with Noah and the ark? Uh, 40 days. Wow. What a coincidence. Now, a lot of people joke about the ark, but I, you know, I looked, uh, I saw a video back in the 90s, back when they had Blockbuster, they had a really wonderful video. Oh, I wish I'd have, I'd have known to copy it and kept it, but um, this guy was a marine engineer. He designs boats. And ships 
And he did a scale model of the Ark and then put it in a huge uh, glass, like an aquarium, but it was huge. It wasn't a small one. It was huge. And then he put it on a like a pedestal where you could turn it around, uh, tilt it. And he tilted it at a 45 degree right and then 45 degree left. And, you know, water was splashing over the, the model of the ark. And he says, you know what? He says, this is the most stable design I have ever seen. He says, it's not made for speed, but as far as just uh, being, you know, floating and not being able to be sunk for a storm. He says, this is the most stable design. And he says, it's very similar um, in some ways to the design of a battleship. It was very, very, he said, this would be very difficult to sink. So, and a lot of people don't know it, but the size of the Ark was the size of what they called a... World War II, a U.S. World War II Jeep Escort Carrier. Now, there was two sizes of carriers back then. There was the Escort Carriers, which were smaller than the what they call the Fleet Carriers. Uh, they called them CVEs. And they were only about, had about half the capacity of a Fleet Carrier. But still, you're talking... A ship that could carry 30 or 40 planes you know it was big and everybody laughs about that you know oh yeah they put two of every animal on there ha 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 but look it up a CVE aircraft carrier or a Jeep carrier World War two thing was huge people of course, they were not really made for frontline duty. They were more of a, like for uh, escorting convoys or when, uh, oh, they, they were not very fast, so they couldn't keep up with the, uh, the fast attack fleet. But they were good for uh, providing air support for, uh, Allied troop landings and cargo ships and things like that in case they were, you know, make sure that they weren't running into uh, enemy positions or enemy ships, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles away or scouting for submarine, enemy submarines. You know, the Ark was huge. So, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he was a hungered, and afterward a hungered, and afterward hungered. Um, there are people that have gone thirty days without, you know, fasting for thirty days, no problem. Forty days, that is. That's pushing it, people. I fasted for a week. And, you know, three days and a day here and a day there. But 40 days, boy, that's, that's pushing it. Verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written. That's how you answer the devil. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Oh, boy. How many people know the word of God? Not many. Even churchgoers. It's, it's terrible. And I'm of the opinion God's going to allow a lot of churchgoers to suffer in their lukewarm faith and be deceived. Why? Because 
They never bothered to read their Bible. Yeah, that's why these TV preachers get away with uh, all their lies, because, you know, <laughs> nobody knows the Bible. You know, if you had a church and the pastor was outright lying and the congregation knew the Bible, they'd all stand up and say, you're a liar. But they don't do that. They... They plod and clap, you know. Hey, Joel Osteen, look at that beautiful smile he's got. He must have one heck of a dentist. Oh, yeah. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him, taking who? Jesus. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Wow. All the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So you're talking from, you know, uh, Babel, Babylon, Assyria, Greece, present time was Rome. Does this include the end time beast kingdom that Daniel was talking about? The iron kingdom of the beast? I would believe so. It says all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. But compared to where Christ came from, coming down from heaven, you know, the kingdoms of this world compared to the kingdom up in heaven, streets made out of gold, uh, you know, and here Rome's got dirt, dirt paths. I don't know. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I will give it. If thou wilt, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. What? And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. What? All this is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it? If thou therefore will Worship me, all shall be thine. Huh. What did Jesus say? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Wait a minute here. Why didn't Jesus say, oh, Satan, you're a liar. These kingdoms are not yours to give. But he didn't say that. So evidently, the devil was somewhat telling the truth. Does that, wow, I'm confused. Or am I? Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So I guess these kingdoms are his for now anyways. And he, Satan, brought him, Jesus, and he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down from thence. You know, jump off. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands, 
and in their hands. They shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Ah, so here it is. The devil's trying to tempt Jesus to get him off the straight and narrow path. Didn't work, so he departed for a season. What's that? Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator? I'll be back. Yeah, departed for a season. Well, in James chapter 4 and verse 7, it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Right, he's not going to waste his time. And guys, you know this. Uh, you know, you like a girl and uh, you ask her out and she says, ah, sorry, uh, I'm busy this weekend, can't do it. Okay, no problem. You ask her the next weekend, same thing. Oh, I'm busy this weekend, you know. No thanks. Maybe, maybe next time. And then you ask again the next weekend, you know, and then the next weekend and the next weekend. I mean, how many times until you get the message not interested, you know? Uh, it would probably help if there was like a sign on her forehead that says, I'll never date you, you know, but, you know, uh, Captain Obvious, but. You know, same thing. If uh, Satan can't uh, mess with us, he's going to move on to somewhere else. Because he only has a limited amount of possibilities and things he can do. He's not everywhere and like God the Father. No, he's not, he's not like God the Father. He's not everywhere. Now, wait a minute. If... God created heaven and earth. Why is Satan God of this world? Well, in Ephesians 3, 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And that includes Satan. Satan was created by God, uh, Christ. Well, Lucifer, whatever, you know. Revelation 4.11 Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Do you know that even evil Satan, you know, and if you call him the devil, that's fine. You know the devil is just the word evil? With a capital D? Yeah. Evil with a capital D. Devil. That's called an embed. Um, Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. How about Genesis 1.1? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Oh, yeah. How about John 1.1? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, unless, of course, you're reading the Jehovah's False Witness God, uh, Bible, and it says, and the Word was a God. 
And then they'll tell you, well, you know, God the Father, and then you got Jesus who is a God. So if you got God and a God, that's two, right? But then they'll say, oh no, he's only, there's only one God. There's God and a God. You know, that's like one and a half, which they round down to be one. And if you can figure that one out, you're doing a lot better than I can. So, yeah. Nope. Thank you, Jehovah's Falls Witnesses and their New World Order Bible. I mean, New World Order Translation. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There you go. So how is it that if this world was created by God, how did Satan get to be the God of this world? How, how does that work? Well, I believe the answer is in Job chapter 1. And some scholars that know a lot about the Bible say that they believe that Job is the oldest book in the Bible, which I am tempted to believe. I didn't believe it at first, but... There's a reason. Job 1.1 1, 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And the man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. He avoided and stayed away and hated evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses in a very great household. So this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Do you know how much land you'd have to have to uh, be able to use 500 yoke of oxen? I mean, that's a lot of land. And you know how much land you'd need to be able to feed 7,000 sheep and 300 camels and she asses and yeah, I mean you're talking this guy's got something that's probably like the size of Nebraska well maybe not but you know maybe Delaware you know Delaware all right so verse 4 and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day. Some people say they're celebrating their birthday. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Hey, sis, come on over. Uh, I'm having a party. Eat, drink, and be merry. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings, according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now here it is, Job is performing the office of a priest in offering sin offerings for his family. Levitical laws haven't even been given yet, as far as I know. Or if they have, unless Job was of the tribe of Levi, he wouldn't have been allowed to do this. So it probably is an older before, before the book Le Leviticus. I don't know. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now, people will tell me, I've had people tell me, oh, well, see, this is proof that uh, 
Satan still has access to heaven because the sons of God and Satan came among them and they presented themselves before the Lord. But it doesn't tell you that they're in heaven. It doesn't tell you where they are at all. They could be here on earth. The Lord could have been here on earth. And then the sons of God came to present themselves uh, with Satan on the earth. That's my guess. Uh, so I'm just saying. And people argue this because in Revelation 12, it talks about Satan being cast out of heaven. And I think it was past, and some people think it's the future, but hey, it's like, you know, arguing over the shape of the earth. You know, is it really that important? You know, is it something to disfellowship with? I don't think so. But uh, if you want to know who the sons of God are, compare Genesis 6 when there were sons of God with the daughters of men with the giants. Compare that with Job 38, where it says that the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Now, in Job 38, if you got these sons of God shouting for joy at the foundation of the earth, when the earth is first created, they had to exist before the earth was created. Which means... It is impossible for them to be Adam, kind, man, because Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. Read Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2 and compare with Job 38. When you can read Genesis chapter 3. And besides, the sons of God in Genesis 3, marrying the daughters of men, when have you ever heard that believers marrying unbelievers, which they'll tell you that the sons of God were believers, and then the daughters of men were unbelievers. So all the men were believers, all the women were unbelievers? Really? And then they get married and they have giants for children? Really? Uh, that don't make no sense to me. But this is the nonsense that your satanic paid for whores that fill the pulpits of this land, fills the preachers of the churches of this land. This is the kind of nonsense they teach. And because of the total ignorance of the flock that would rather have a beer, a burger, and a ball game on the television instead of reading the Word of God, I call it the three B's, Burgers, beer, and ball game. You know, yeah, sit in front of a television screaming at a ball game with a burger in one hand and a beer in the other. And then they wonder why their daughters get pregnant when they're unmarried, 16 years old, and why their sons are in jail and strung out on drugs. Gee, I wonder why. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Hey, where are you coming from, Satan? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Ah, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. You know, I'm just kind of like walking around, checking things out, you know, seeing what's happening. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in earth, a perfect and an upright man, and one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Why did God make Abraham and Job wealthy? Because he must have known that they would never let their wealth turn their heart away from God. That's my theory, anyways. Verse 9, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth God fear, does Job fear God for naught? Does Job fear you for nothing? Hast not thou made him hedge about him? You know, they put a hedge about him. A fence. 
Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Yeah, Lord, you put up one of those fences around him and I can't get to him. You think he fears you for nothing? You've protected him. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But, here's the challenge. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Ha ha ha. Oh yeah? Yeah, take you take everything away from him and he's going to curse you, God. I'm making a bet with you right now. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in, his, is in thy power. Oh, yeah. So here it is. Satan issues a, a, a bet, a challenge. And the Lord says, Okay, I'm going to take your little bet here. Well, that's the Bob translation. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself, Put not forth thine hand. So you can do whatever you want, but you can't kill him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding inside them. And the Sabaeans, um, I think this is just, an, from what I understand, it's an old word for Arabs. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, the fire of God has fallen from heaven. Now, people, this servant is thinking it's the fire of God, but really it's the fire of Satan. Remember, God said you could touch everything he's got. Now, why do I think this fire from God is actually fire from the devil? Well, Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This is the beast in the end times. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So here is this beast does great wonders. He's doing miracles. And he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Elijah did the same thing. So this beast is going to have fire, power to bring fire down from the sky and devour his enemies. People are going to say, wow, this is God. Verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth and uh, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six 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 
So this beast is going to have power to bring fire from the sky, be able to do signs and lying signs and wonders. Say he's going to, Satan has power. God allows him to have power. And those people that never bothered to read the Bible are going to be deceived because this beast is going to have the same power that the prophet Elijah did when he brought fire down from the sky to devour the sacrifice. All right, so Job 16, 1, 16. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So evidently, this is not the fire of God, but the fire of Satan. That's what I believe. Verse 17, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am uh, escaped alone to tell thee. So everybody's wanting to come in there and uh, kill the servants to steal all Job's cattle and everything else, right? While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So I guess the tornado, right? Where else has we seen that? Is there a parallel to this? Uh, Luke 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he, Jesus, went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. So, you know, Jesus goes to sleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Now, remember, Peter is a fisherman. And you better believe a fisherman knows about boats and sailing. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, Jesus, and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the waters, uh, the winds and the water, and they obey him. Who sent these storms of life upon the boat? I suspect it was the uh, devil. You know, just like in Job. You know, there was a great wind that came from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only... And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Let's go to verse 20 now. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly oh yeah all right so satan's taken away all his material possessions and his children or at least his sons i'm not sure about his daughters it said his sons were dead i don't know verse 2 uh chapter 2 job Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, 
From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Oh, you, you know, he's trying to get him to destroy Job without a cause, you know, without a reason. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy flesh. And the Lord said unto him, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So he's in your hands. You could do anything you want to him, but you can't kill him. You got to, you know, save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his seed unto his crown. So he had boils on his feet from the bottom of his feet unto the top of his head. And I hear boils are extremely painful. And he took him a pot shard to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes, uh, repenting in sackcloth and ashes was a very biblical thing to do. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Wow. How's that for some advice from your uh, beloved spouse, huh? Curse God and die? See, Satan didn't have to chase after his wife, did he? No. Curse God and die. Boy. Uh, thanks, wife, for the, your wonderful advice, but uh, I think I'm going to pass on that advice. Verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So, God of this world. Satan, God of this world, right? But he still has to get permission from the Lord. So, I think I'm going to make this a part one and more to come. So, stay tuned. Same bat time, same bat channel. I remember that from a kid, by the way. Adam West, Batman. Oh, yeah. Well, no bats here. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.